What's going on guys, Bustle P6 here, back to another video, and today I'm here to do my SmackDown review from Chicago, Illinois, and, well folks, it's almost the end of the year. I can't believe that it's almost Christmas. It's going to be Christmas in about nine days, yeah, and it's going to be New Year's in about two weeks. Where has the time gone? I surely don't know, and I still need to make my end of the year videos. So, how was this edition of, of SmackDown? And besides maybe one or two moments, the show wasn't really that worth no. It was just kind of there for the most part. There wasn't really a lot of matches. There was like maybe three, and it was all talking segments, which I don't have a problem with as long as the talking segments are interesting. And there were some good ones, but there was also some ones where I'm like, wow, they're really doing this. So let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought about the show. We start off with the bloodline arriving. More of them here in a little bit. We kick off the action with the women's tag team pound match between Liv Morgan and Tegan Knox versus Io and Dakota. And the crowd goes mild. There were times where the crowd was just kind of just sitting on their hands. But when Liv got in, they kind of cheered a little bit loudly. And they did get some big reactions here and there. And the match wasn't bad. It just... Tegan, I I like Tegan, don't get me wrong, even though she has a Kevin Nash uh, syndrome wherever she snaps and tears a quad or whatever. Look, I hope that she does well, but I, I just hope that it works out for her. That's all I really care about. Uh, we get towards the end of the match where Billy distracts, and then someone kicks Knox in the head. We get a moot salt, Ian and Dakota win. Okay. Uh, by the way, that someone turns out to be Zia Lee that they re revealed her identity on Twitter in a very, very, very lazy fashion. They could have built it up, be like, ooh, could have been someone else, but no, it was Eo, Or not Eo, it was uh, Zaya. Okay. I don't have a problem with that. I just don't know where they're going to go with this. So we get a Gunter video package. Really, really, really good stuff. Talking about the uh, Icy Town match tonight. Then we get a ricochet vignette saying, I've beaten them all and I will beat Gunter. We get a recap of what happened two weeks ago the Riddle. And then we get a recap of what happened last week with L1s getting involved with the Bloodline still. Zane News was backstage talking about, hey, uh, make sure you make Roman proud. You got to make Roman proud. And uh, they said, it's not going to be a good night. It's going to be a great night. We get a recap of Night and Bray, or like Night and Day. Like, if you guys like this, good. I just don't, I feel like the Bray stuff really ran its course, and I feel like he's, it's getting overindulgent at this point. I don't, I don't hate you guys for liking it. It's just not for me. The supernatural spoopy stuff, I, yeah, I, I'm just not into it anymore. I kind of dug it at first, but it went way too far. I feel like the Bray character, I wouldn't say damaged goods because he still has more creativity. It's just that I can't get invested in it. I'm glad he's in the right place of mind and all that stuff. It's just not really for me. And then we get footage of Knight strapped in a chair with the black phone mask on. Okay. And then Knight is in the ring and he... Talks about what happened, and uh, he says, Bray, why don't we sell this man the man? The Bray comes out, and he's like, I never attacked you, you attacked me, and you've unleashed this hell that you cannot uh, escape from. And then, uh, how about, and he says, How about we sell this man the man? And then Knight attacks Bray, and all of a sudden, Uncle Howdy appears on the screen, and then he walks on the stage, and he just laughs. And Uncle Ali says, what have you done? What have you done? Okay, it's two different people. I don't really know who Uncle Howdy is, and I really do not care. Um, cool, I guess. So then I ran to Hamer backstage, and they walk to uh, the dressing room. And then we get the Ice Time match. Ricochet versus Gunter with Imperium. I will say the match itself... Uh, it was okay at first, and it started getting good, and it started to get pretty damn good towards the end where 
Uh, I'm not going to go through every move verbatim. All I will say is, oh my God, those chops. Ouch. I heard, I felt that from my television screen. That was, God, that was absolutely brutal. Um, Ricochet got in some really good spots. He was just doing a lot of punches and kicks, which was kind of weird for a guy that does a lot of flips and stuff. He did his occasional flips here and there. But, um. He was trying to lift up Gunther, but eventually couldn't. But then he eventually hit a, um, um, he hit a, um, vertical brain buster and she started pressing for a very big two count. The crowd popped huge for that. Michael Cole sounded like, <laughs> he sounded like he was about to piss himself. Um, we get a power bomb, but a kick out. And then Ricochet kept trying to fight back. That brutal, those brutal slaps. Jesus, I, whew. I don't like that, in all honesty, but I understand why they do it. And in the end, the last symphony, and here you go. Gunter wins. They appear and go to attack, and all of a sudden, the Strowman comes down. And, okay. They're going to be having a match next week. Um, I have already read the SmackDown spoilers. Do not spoil them in the comments, please, but I do know that we're going to be having a tag match next week. So, the Bloodliner backstage. And, um... Jay says, or uh, Jimmy says, you know, we're going to have a great night tonight and all that stuff. And then uh, Roman says, get Pierce for me. And then we come back from break. And then uh, Pierce shows up. And um, they say, how about we have a tag match play on the 30th? So in two weeks. Okay. And uh, it's going to be me and Sammy against KO and whatever opponent you're, he's going to choose. We all knew it was going to be John Cena. We all knew it was going to be Cena. So, there's a spoiler there, folks. Tribute to the Trips video package. I hope the women don't get assaulted. Yeah, that actually was sorrow case. is not looking good. Uh, if you guys do hear a little bit of um, mishap, it's because my producer's in here with me. Would you like to say hi? She's camera shy. You hate me, don't you? You want down? Okay. Okay. Fine. I'll let you out. Apologies, folks. I had doggo problems. So anyways, now on to the least entertaining stuff. We get Hit Row versus Legada Fantasma versus the Viking Raiders, War Raiders, whatever the hell you're calling them. It's a number one contenders match. Only thing that's memorable is the top down on Boss they dive. Very badly. That was terrible. Um, that God, that was bad. It looked like he landed on his head, but it actually landed on his back on the apron, which outside looked like that still hurt, but that was, it was hilariously bad. Then the women get involved and hit row win. I don't know what happened, and therefore I did not care. So yeah, uh, Kayla and Raquel in the trainer's room. Raquel talks, and I didn't care. And then uh, Ronda and Shane attack. Okay? The bull line come down. And uh, we have a problem. We have a KO problem. Sammy, you need to get rid of him. And Sammy says, I am KO's friend. Well, let me reiterate. I was KO's friend. And then uh, John Cena appears on screen. He's going to team with Owens against Sammy and Roman. What? I would have never guessed. So that's basically it, folks. There wasn't really a lot to smack down this week. Besides maybe Cena teaming with Owens in a couple of weeks. And maybe the IT title match. Nothing really new to this show. And also, you got to see my producer. Yay! Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Tap the little for notifications. Join the herd. Talk in the next video. Peace out.